The people of Constantinople may keep their possessions. There will be no looting. In return, you will open the gates of the city and kiss the hands of our Sultan. Sultan Mehmet will be the one ruler of the Romans. Today is going to be sad. We're going to talk about the most innocent murder in the Bible. The most innocent murder in the Bible is the story of David killing Uriah. Now here we have a innocent man. This was a man of war. And you're going to see that Uriah represents the father. Now, two people died in this story. Here we have Uriah. And then we have the baby with no name. This is the son of David that was made during the adultery of David and Bathsheba. This man, David, killed an innocent man and took his wife. Now let's deal with this. First of all, you got to understand that Uriah was a Hittite and Hittite goes into Heth. And Heth is actually the shape of a door. Now, many of you are in the dark and you do not realize that the shape of the letter Heth represents the doorpost and lintel that the Hebrews covered with the blood of a lamb at Passover. So the blood that was put on the doorposts, the lintels, that blood, we can trace it all the way back to Heth. Heth. We can trace it all the way back to the Hittite. We can trace it all the way back to the innocent murder of Uriah. Now let's deal with this innocent murder. This is going to be in the book of 2 Samuel. Let's go to verse 1. 2 Samuel chapter 11 verse 1. And it came to pass after the year was expired, at the time when kings go forth to battle, that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. Now you got to pay attention to words such as Rabbah. This is going into Bilal. This is going into the ruler of the Arabs. You see Arab spelled in that name. Also is going into Ammon. Now Ammon in the Book of Mormon was a man who was so empowered by God. It was said that he could not be killed. He is a picture of al Mahdi during his nine year reign. Al Mahdi will be divinely protected. So here we have something stolen from Bilal. And this is the religion we call Islam. The Kaaba and all this stuff has been stolen from this black man who is the originator of the religion of Islam. So now let's go to verse 2. And it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. This woman represents a religion. And that religion is Islam. This religion is all about cleansing. It's all about performing evolution and ritual washings. This woman represents a religion. Now let's keep going. And David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this bath 
Sheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite, the Heth. This man is the real lamb. His murder was so innocent, man. This was a good man of war, so sad. And David sent messengers and took her. And she came in unto him, and he lay with her. For she was purified from her uncleanliness. And she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. So you got to look at this as spiritual adultery. Here we have a man killing another man and then making a baby with his wife. This is Christianity. We have letters from Paul. We have teachings where it teaches us of a man who died for our sins. And then this baby or this son is now Lord. This is the religion of Christianity right here. When we made a God out of a baby. You've made a God out of the prophet Isa in Christianity. And so here we have this religion, these two religions. We have the religion of Islam, and then we have the religion of Christianity. And we have two men that are about to die. One of them is the father, the real father. He's a picture of the father. And this man was innocently murdered. And then the baby that was made from this adultery. This baby was born sick. And so this baby has to die. There's no way you can stop it. This baby has to die. Now, my question to you is, who is the real lamb? Who is the real lamb? Here we have a picture of Almaty seen in the life of Uriah. The religion of Christianity killed God the Father. Okay, this is seen in the interpretation of Pharaoh's dream that Joseph interpreted. He had all these seven fat cows and then these lean cows, these skinny cows came and destroyed the seven fat fleshed cows. Same thing with the corn. This is going into the teachings of the New Testament. That skinny New Testament destroyed the Old Testament. And we know Paul is responsible, but he is not alone. He is not alone in this matter. And the prophet Isa was questioned in the Quran. He was asked, did you say to the people, worship you and your mother as gods? So the religion of Christianity killed God the Father. This innocent murder. This is the blood that was on the doorpost. When the destroyer would see that innocent blood, he would pass by that house. If your house does not have the real blood of the lamb upon it, you're going to die. You're going to be doomed. The real blood of the lamb is the death of Al Maddy. Think about it. The baby that was made and think about it. The man that was killed. Which blood is more innocent? It's the man who was killed. It's Uriah. Uriah's blood is crying out. Now let's keep going. You got to read this in your own time. But let's look at David's deception. So let's go to verse 
6, where we left off at. And David sent to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. Now, Uriah, his name means flame of God. His name means light of God. Remember, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Who was speaking? It was God the Father. God the Father. Light got put out because of Christianity. And he has to die to save his own planet. God the Father. I'm not talking about the prophet Isa. There's two deaths. The father has to die and the son has to die. But the father, he didn't, he didn't do nothing. He didn't do anything. Uriah did not do anything. And this man is a picture of the real lamb. Now let's go. Here we have in verse 7. And when Uriah was come unto him, David demanded of him how Joab did and how the people did and how the war prospered. I told you. The God of the Bible is a man. Moses said it in Exodus chapter 15. He said, the Lord is a man of war. And Uriah is a picture of God the Father. Uriah is a picture of Almaty. And David said to Uriah, go down to thy house and wash thy feet. And Uriah departed out of the king's house. And look, and there followed him a mess of meat from the king. There's a huge mess going on with the Messiah. Messiah is going into the last Adam. Think about the first Adam. The first Adam made a huge mistake, but the second Adam, boy, he made a bigger mistake. Now think about Benjamin. When Joseph met up with his brother Benjamin, he gave Benjamin five times a mess of meat. And that's letting you know the mess that was created with Christianity is the hugest mess that the Messiah has to clean up. All right. A lot of that went over your head because when you hear about Jesus being the last Adam or the second Adam, you don't understand that. That's going into a huge mess. That's why he's called the Messiah. There's a huge mess that has to be cleaned up. And the prophet Esau was charged by God to destroy the cross. That is the source of all wickedness. Christianity. Now, going on. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's house with all the servants of his Lord and went not down to his house. Now, we just skip past something. Uriah slept at the door. Now, look at the screen. You see that heth? Okay. That right there is the doorpost where the blood of the lamb was placed. So who is the lamb? Who is the lamb? Is it al Mahdi, the almighty, Lamonti? Or is it the prophet Isa? You tell me. Who is the lamb? Now what has been happening is, one person has been getting another person's credit this whole time. We've been confusing the Lamb of God because we don't know how to interpret the Gospels. When John the Baptist was talking about the Lamb, which takes away the sins of the world, he was talking about the Father in Prophet Isa at the time. Not the Prophet Isa. The Prophet Isa does not take away sin. Al Maddie takes away sin and fills the earth with equity. I'm going to let you think about that right now. But going on. And when they had told David, saying, Uriah went not down unto his house, David said unto Uriah, Camest thou not from thy journey? Why then didst thou not go down unto thine house? Because you've been sleeping with my woman. You got come all up in her. Why am I going to go behind you and get up in that? That's nasty. Okay. And this man, Uriah, was led by the spirit. He wasn't going to go behind David. 
Verse 11, and Uriah said unto David, the ark and Israel and Judah abide in tents. And my Lord Joab and the servants of my Lord are encamped in the open fields. Shall I then go into mine house to eat and to drink and to lie with my wife as thou livest and as thy soul liveth? I will not do this thing. This is a real man of war. We fighting. We've been called to fight in Islam. What I look like trying to be on YouTube and trying to be a model. Okay. What I look like going home sleeping with my wife while my men is on a battlefield bleeding and dying. This is a real man of war. Uriah is a picture of God the father. This is a man. This is an upright man. Did you know that Uriah is listed on David's best warriors list? Uriah is included. This is one of his best warriors. And David then did some real wicked. And he trying to cover his tracks. But Uriah is led by the spirit. And he's not going to go home and sleep with his wife. This is a picture of Al Maddy. Watch this. Verse 13. And when David had called him, he did eat and drink before him. Uh-oh, so now this, this man named Uriah is getting drunk. This is this man's party. This man is going to get ready to die. The Bible says give strong drink to the man that's about to perish. This man is about to die. This man is having a drink. That's what the scriptures say. Give strong drink to the man that is about to perish. This is this man's party. This is this man's celebration. This is a picture of Al Maddie looking at his watch, realizing that he only has nine years left and people are playing games. People are fooling themselves. Women are tripping. Guys are tripping. They don't know what to do. Why? Because they never ever had a heart for God and the truth is coming out you can't fake it if you love God it shows if you don't love God it shows you can't fake it and here is this man Al Maddy, being rejected 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 by the ones who love him rejected by the ones who don't love him this man is constantly being rejected 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 Al Maddy and Uriah is one in the same. This is a picture of God the Father. The man who was innocently murdered that you don't give a crap about. All you focused on is the baby that has to die. Well, what about the father? Uriah is about to die. And David is responsible this is going into the religion we call Christianity is responsible for the prophet Esau dying. Peace and blessings be upon him. And Uriah the father has to die all because of Christianity. In your word it tells you do not have no other gods before him. If you do. There's going to be a visitation. The father is going to have to come to earth and both the father and the son is going to die. And that's going into the third and fourth generation. That is going into the third day. See, third day, fourth letter of the alphabet is D. Okay, the third day is going into 34. 2034 is over. Okay. Now, you can play games all you want. You can sit around and, and get on your game. You can sit around and play that game till your damn fingers hurt. Okay? That is not going to help you in the day of this visitation. Now, going on, here we have David trying to get this man drunk. Uriah is enjoying his party. Now, online on the Hood Apostle Reverb Nation, you can go to my music page, and I got Pictures of me with the balloons behind me. This is going into my celebration. I did a concert on Prairie Street. I'm the man of prayer. I am the man whom Allah is accepting prayer from right now. Okay? Right now. I am the Bilal. The man who was on top of the Kaaba. Praying to Allah. 
Okay? Bilal started it, and Bilal will end it. The story is so sad. So here we have David trying to get this man drunk. The man gets drunk. Let's go to that. So this is going to be verse 14. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. So here we have letters being written. Okay, this is going into forgery. Christianity is all about forgery, man. It's nothing but a big forgery. And David got Uriah drunk, but he didn't go home and sleep with his boot thing. He knew his boot thing was messing with David in the spirit. He slept right in David's house again. Okay, he, 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 he still stayed at David's house. This is a man of war. And so now he's got a letter and this letter is his own death. Okay, David did this man so dirty. Okay, and when we look at the tribes, there's sin in the camp. Let me tell you something. There is sin in the camp of Judah. Now, when the tribes were split, it was in between Ephraim and Judah. So Levi and Benjamin was considered Judah. And Paul is from the tribe of what? Benjamin. Jesus is from the tribe of what? Judah. Judah did something real wicked, y'all. They killed the father. They killed God the father. And I've been teaching this and I've been preaching this. It's just now the light bulb has really been turned up. And I can see more. So now let's get back to this thing, man. This is this is so sad. All right. So now let's go over to verse 14. And it came to pass in the morning that David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. So here we got this letter J in here. Okay. This letter J points to Jesus so many ways. Okay. Now let's go to verse 15. And he wrote in the letter saying, set ye Uriah in the forefront, forefront, 20, 30, 4, Uriah dies, Al Matty dies, it's in the scripture, tell somebody a prophet is here. And he wrote in the letter saying, set ye Uriah in the forefront of the hottest battle. And retire ye from him that he may be smitten and die. See, this is a picture of Al Mahdi. Al Mahdi will be protected for a certain amount of time. But after those years expire, Al Mahdi is going to die. This is the perfect type and shadow of Al Mahdi, the life of Uriah. Verse 16. And it came to pass when Joab observed the city that he assigned Uriah unto a place where he knew that valiant men were. And the men of the city went out and fought with Joab. And there fell some of the people of the servants of David. And Uriah the Hittite died also. Now look, they're fighting against the children of Ammon. So this man is responsible. David was responsible for Uriah's death. He was killed by the sword of Ammon. That was so wicked because the sword of Ammon, Ammon actually means teacher. If you look it up, it means teacher. The sword that killed Uriah, you want to know whose sword it was? It was Paul's sword. It was the letters in the New Testament. That sword has blood on it. That Bible you read in that New Testament, it has blood on it. It has the father's blood on it. It was the sword of the New Testament, okay, the sword of Ammon that killed God the Father. Wow. So now we have Uriah dead, and David did it. Somebody in the tribe of Judah did it, okay? And right now, we've been going through this time 
where we've been honoring Saul. Now, what do, you, what do I mean by that? Remember when Saul got in trouble with God. This is like his second time. He was told to kill all the Edomites and he let them live. When Samuel came to see him, Samuel checked him and let him know that the kingdom was being taken from him permanently. But Saul started begging Samuel, please, please honor me for the people. And you see the prophet Muhammad, that's what he did. He honored Jesus for the people. But he let you know in Amram that there was some things that God and the prophet Isa disagreed about. Okay, right now we're going through this this time where Saul is being honored for the people. But the real truth about what really happened in Christianity is soon to come out shortly. Now we have the death of Uriah down. Now let's go to the death of the baby. This is going to be in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 1. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds. Now think about all those churches the Christians have. Look at all these churches Paul has. With Jesus' name on it, okay? The rich man right now represents Christianity. Christianity is the richest religion on the planet. And the poor man is going into Al-Mahdi, okay? The Muslim who is disassociated from the other Muslims because right now the Arabs are trying to keep something that does not belong to them. So the poor man represents Al Mahdi. Okay? Now let's keep going. But the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb. Who is this ewe lamb? This lamb is Bathsheba. The religion of Islam belongs to the poor man. Hello. That's the only religion I'm interested in. I don't want anything to do with Christianity. No, 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 no. I don't want anything to do with the fake Israelite movement because that's nothing but Christianity. The real Israelite movement will begin in Islam when al Mahdi comes to the forefront. Which he had bought and nourished up and it grew up together with him and with his children it did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup. This man spent out of that which was provided for him. This was a man who held his own. This was a man who went to work. This was a man that wasn't just sitting in front of the damn TV with a joystick. This man provided for his family. This was a real man. And drank of his own cup. And lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. Okay? This religion of Islam is like a daughter to me. Why? Because I'm daddy. Al Mahdi is the daddy. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wafering, that means traveling man, that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb. And dressed it for the man that was come to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that have done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb. Look, fourfold. The lamb has to be restored before 34. Okay, fourfold. And fourfold is going into something else I don't want to get into right now. All right. But the lamb has to be restored. That was the judgment from Nathan. As the Lord liveth, the man that have done this thing shall surely die. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. And Nathan said to David, you are the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed you king over Israel. I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your master's house 
and thy master's wives into thy bosom and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? You have killed Uriah the Heth, the real lamb of God. You killed him with the sword of the children of Ammon. This is Christianity. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from thine house because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be that wife. So that religion we call Islam is coming back to al Mahdi. And al Mahdi will be like McDonald's in the future, okay? He will have the most successful ministry out of everybody who ever ministered on the planet. God is going to give me back what was stolen from me. Thus saith the Lord God, behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house and will take thy wives before thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbor and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son. Now that's the judgment of my God. You see, my God is not like you. My God is not soft. My God said, looky here, the judgment I have for you is I'm taking all your women and I'm giving them to somebody else. OK, and he's going to sleep with all of them in the sight of the sun. Now, that's the God of the Bible. Your problem is you've been you've been indoctrinated by Paul that you don't understand how the real God is. That was some heartbreaking news. That was some very bad news news okay so here we have this baby now we got to deal with this baby what's up with this baby though okay this baby didn't do nothing let's let's deal with this baby verse 12 for thou did it it's secret but i will do this thing before all israel and before the son and david said unto nathan i have sinned against the lord and nathan said unto david the lord also have put away your sin you shall not die. Wow. How be it? Because by this deed, thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. That child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. Verse 15. And Nathan departed unto his house and the Lord struck that child that Uriah's wife bare unto David. So this is going into the killing of the firstborn. It was the Lord who struck those babies dead. And this is how you know the Bible and the Quran confirms one another. Because according to the Quran, I don't know if you forgot or not, but Allah said, I will cause you to die, O oh Jesus. This is God's wrath. This is God's judgment. The Lord struck the child. The prophet Isa has to die at the last day. Now, look at the day the baby dies. I'm going to show you. When this baby dies, let's deal with um, David's sadness. Verse 16. David, therefore, besought God for the child and fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth. And the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth. But he would not. Neither did he eat bread with them. Watch this. And it came to pass on the seventh day. The seventh day is going into the last day. This is going into the real Sabbath spiritually. The prophet Esau will die at the last day. The killing of the firstborn was the last plague. It was the final plague. You see how the Christians have rushed the death of the prophet Esau? It's true that the prophet Esau is going to die. But he hasn't died yet. He won't die until the seventh day. He won't die until the last day. So here we have this baby that was born sick. And David tried his best to pray. I don't care how many times you pray. Okay. I don't care. You can pray. You can cry a river. The prophet Isa is going to die. Okay. And the father has to die. The father and son has to die because you've made a God out of the son. What does the law say? 
The law says honor your father and your mother. It never once tells you to honor your son. We have this same situation in the book of Samuel. This was Eli's problem. God told Eli, because you did not restrain your sons and you've been placing your sons above me, they both going to die. And they all died. Even Eli died. This has already been in our Bible. We should know better. We should know better. But what happened? We've been honoring a son above the father and the judgment has come upon us. The prophet Isa hasn't died yet. Stop being dumb the way you read those gospels. Get around someone who is anointed. Get around someone who knows the Bible, who can show you the real truth about the prophet Isa. He didn't die. It was a false murder, just like Joseph's death. Joseph's death was a false murder. And Christianity is responsible for the false murder of the prophet Isa. The prophet Isa won't die until the last day. So we covered all of this. We covered the death of Uriah. Uriah was the lamb of Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53 is not talking about Jesus. Isaiah 53 is talking about his father. This man was innocently murdered. This man was despised and rejected from his own family, from his own house. This man was numbered with the transgressors. This man was in heaven this whole time, didn't do anything, and he had to come down here and die, all because of the lie in Christianity. So you tell me who's the real lamb? Who is the real lamb? Who is the real lamb? The real lamb is Uriah. The real lamb is Al Matty. Wake up and study the Bible. Stop playing games. Life is passing you by. Grow up. OK, I'm sorry you didn't have a childhood, but you need to grow up because things is going to get real in the field. It's going to get real. So the death of Uriah was the most innocent murder. The death of the prophet Esau was automatic because you can't make a God out of a person. You can't make a God out of the creation. So his death was automatic. The most innocent murder out of the whole deal was the death of Uriah. They stole the man's church. They stole his religion and then killed him. That man has the most innocent death and his blood is the blood that's in the Passover. He is the ultimate Passover lamb. That's why the door is heth. With the blood sprinkled on it. That blood on the doorpost represents Uriah. Hello. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters who will. Notice I said who will be in the real truth in the future.